right, so we're going to uh, welcome up our next presenter. We'll give a little bit of time to start shuffling around right here. Um, so you, if you've been following the papers and the news recently, uh, we um, this area, Virginia Beach, has what is effectively like our first angel fund uh, called 757 Angel Fund. And we have today with us the executive director of 757 Angels, Monique Adams. And she's here to tell you all about how they want to help support entrepreneurs in this area. So please welcome Monique. Thank you. Um, wow, this is amazing. Um, thank you all for being here today. And hats off to the founders of this um, great organization because it's awesome to have so many of you in the room today. Um, my name is Monique Adams. I'm the executive director of 757 Angels, and um, I'm honored to be presenting here at this inaugural event. Um, a little bit about my background. I have a real estate finance background um, from Los Angeles originally. I moved to New York, corporate finance, and then found myself here in Norfolk, courtesy of my sweet husband. Um, <laughs> It's been great. I've been here for over 20 years, and I'm happy to be a part of this community. Um, Paul Hirschbiel, who's here with me today, um, approached me last year and um, asked if I would be interested to help form an angel group in Hampton Roads. And um, originally, I was struck by the biblical references and had to get past the biblical reference and learn about the, the financial one. Um, actually, angels, uh, when they talk about angel groups, it's a historical reference to wealthy um, investors that saved Broadway shows from going dark in the 1920s. So once I got through that historical clarification, um, I was very excited to jump on board and embark on the journey of what is now 757 Angels. So, uh, my agenda here today with you is kind of to discuss with you the who, what, whens, where's, hows of 757 Angels, in no particular order. Um, in order to do that, I just kind of want to give you a bird's eye view briefly of what's going on nationally. Um, angel groups have um, had explosive growth over the last years. In fact, they've more than tripled since 1999. There are, are approximately 400 angel groups in the United States, and they supply financing of about $25 billion. Um, so why have angel groups been so successful? Um, states, cities, regions, investors have all jumped on board because they've identified entrepreneurs as a key driver of job creation. And in fact, over the last 25 years, and um, again, these statistics are also provided by the Kauffman Foundation, um, but um, over the last 25 years, um, all net job growth has been provided by startup companies that are less than five years old. Um, so what are the challenges faced by entrepreneurs today? Um, I attended a recent um, State of the Startup Community by Zach Miller, and he talked about some of the challenges that are faced by angel, er, entrepreneurs in our area. The two being uh, expensive real estate and the lack of capital to grow their companies. And this graphic actually shows that. Um, Angel groups are here to bridge the gap, the capital gap, in between friends and family rounds and venture capital rounds. That um, is shown in this range from 250 to approximately one and a half, three million dollars on the high end. So what options do you have as an entrepreneur here in Hampton Roads? Um, there's, of course, there's online sources, um, there's crowdsourcing, there's AngelList. Um, we have individual angels, and also now we have an angel group. In Hampton Roads, um, there have been several individual generous angels that have been operating um, independently. However, um, in recent months, starting February 1st, we launched this first organized angels group, 757 Angels, um, and I want to tell you more about that. 
we are 76 members strong. So since February 1st, we've been overwhelmed by the support of the investor community. We draw from a cross section of the region. Um, and our members and slash investors are all accredited. So they're all high net worth individuals and that is an SEC regulation. Uh, so what is 757 Angels? We are, um, let me go back. My slides are not perfectly in order. So what is 757 <laughs> Angels? We're a, a nonprofit organization and we are a connection service, connecting entrepreneurs to investors. Um, in turn, we're looking to grow and diversify the community. So there's a civic overlay as well. Um, so what are the benefits to our members? Why do people join our organization? Members um, join for a place at the table. There's a unique investment opportunity presented to them. Our um, members invest as individuals. They make independent investment decisions. We do not um, invest as a fund, unlike other groups. Funds charge carries, and carries are expensive, so we have moved away from that model. Um, our investors are excited about participating in a, the grassroots initiative to catalyze our economy. Um, 757 Angels provide streamlined and efficient processes. So rather than individuals running after individual deals, we can all collaborate, share responsibilities, share information. We have three membership meetings a year. More about that later. And we also are part of the Angel Capital Association, which is the leading professional organization, which gives us a tremendous resource of best practices, documents, <coughs> webinars, seminars, so on and so forth. So what does that mean to entrepreneurs in the area? We've established some key investment criteria for entrepreneurs. Primarily, um, our entrepreneurs need to be located in or planning to relocate to Hampton Roads. This is a regional organization for the entrepreneurial community of Hampton Roads. We want our entrepreneurs to derive the majority of their revenues outside of Hampton Roads. So this isn't an organization or we are not looking for companies that are going to set up John's Pizza Shop that's going to put Mary's Pizza Shop out of business. We're really looking for um, entrepreneurs that are looking to um, revitalize and catalyze the Hampton Roads economy. We're looking for resourceful management teams that are balanced, flexible, and coachable. We are definitely looking for solutions to compelling problems with large markets and competitive advantages. Some market validation is definitely um, appreciated. And we are not necessarily uh, looking for sales validation. We um, are interested in welcome applications from pre-revenue companies as well as early stage companies. We have no restrictions on industry. Um, and we are um, definitely interested in, and hope you have a keen understanding of what potential exits are at play. So what is our, our process? How do we look to do this? This is a lot of arrows and a big graphic. But basically what I want to point out to you is we have three cycles a year. Each of these columns of arrows represent um, a cycle for Hampton Roads. They start with an application deadline, which is the first, and they culminate with a membership meeting. The first three set of arrows are the three cycles in 2015, and the last three are the um, cycles in 2016. How does this work? Um, so what we would do is we ask for all prospective entrepreneurs to apply on our online application system. We, um, we have an entry point through our website, 757angelsgroup.com. All of our process and all of these graphics can be find, found at that website. You go through Entrepreneurs Apply Now you'll be able to access GUST, which is our online application platform, and it's also um, an investor deal monitoring platform. So it's a collaborative online platform connecting entrepreneurs with our investors. So once again, you apply at the top where a business model is a funnel, 
And then we go through a pre-screening stage. So all applications are pulled and reviewed by the executive director, and they're screened, pre-screened for key, key investment criteria as I described to you before. Recommendations are made to our board. We have a very active board that meets two times per cycle. The first meeting at the end of pre-screening, when we discuss the recommendations of the executive director, as well as the other applications, all of them are discussed and approximately five are selected to advance to the screening um, stage of our process. During screening, all five companies receive a uh, mentor slash a vetting team that starts the due diligence process. This could be one or two people. Um, and help to prepare them for a presentation that will occur at the end of the screening process three weeks later. At the end of this screening process, those five companies come back and present at a second board meeting with a 10-minute pitch, followed by a 10-minute Q&A session. At the end of that, those five the board deliberates on those five opportunities and selects two or three that are most fully developed to present to our membership. The membership meeting takes place pitches, it's a 15 minute pitch, which is quite longer than the six minute pitch here, um, which apparently is a quite a luxury. So you get 15 minutes to pitch the membership. There's a 10 minute Q&A se uh, session, and the group disbands. Following that, there's a post-presentation process in place where the 757 Angels group steers investors to entrepreneurs. Um, we do not provide them with due diligence. Again, our individual investors do their own due diligence and they make their own investment decisions. Um, so what are the keys to success in this process? Um, understanding the terms. There's a lot of unique inter uh, term terminology as a part of um, startups. Surround yourself with very um, smart advisors, um, entrepreneurs, legal people, um, industry experts. Stay flexible on your terms as you're creating your term sheet, um, especially valuation. Understand the common practices. This is something that we're learning as we go to. We're a new group in Hampton Roads, and so we're learning what our investors' appetite is in Hampton Roads. And I would encourage you to keep your ear to the ground to learn that too as you construct your presentations to our group. Of course, be passionate and be prepared. Practicing your pitch several times in forums like this, and there's many other forums available in our area, is really, really um, fantastic so that you can be prepared to protect, uh, present to our investors. Um, do I have much more time? We probably need to get okay. into Q&A. So, um, to get to the uh, most important thing, this is the link to apply now to our um, Gus platform. Um, feel free to call me or contact me at business cards up in front. Um, go to our website, 757angelsgroup.com, um, and fill out that application. To review it. Application deadline for our second cycle is May 13th. Okay, okay. great. I know we have a bunch of questions. So, come around and then go back to see. So, if I fill out the application and it goes through and it didn't go past pre screening, would you guys notify us that it didn't go through? Absolutely. And can we re yes. apply? Yes, great question. Okay. So your first question is, will you get notified? Yes, you'll be notified, and ideally we would provide you with some feedback. So during pre-screening, I not only review the applications, but I'll be reaching out to entrepreneurs and trying to get to know you. If you don't make it past um, pre-screening, we ideally would look to provide you with feedback. We would notify you. Our decisions are defer, <coughs> advance, decline. Um, you would have the ability to apply up to three times. So if you are deferred, you can come back and apply two more times. Question here and then here. 
Thanks, Tony. Two, two questions. Uh, first one, what's your relationship or partnership with reInvent Hampton Roads? Uh -huh. And the second question is, I, I saw seven industries. Are you looking for uh, companies that are B2C, B2B, B2G? Is there any uh -huh. preference for the, the type of yeah. companies you're looking for? I'll answer the latter, and then I'm going to let Paul answer the reInvent Hampton Roads question, since he was part of um, that initiative. Um, to answer, we are not industry specific. We do have a preference for scalable, high growth companies, but there is no industry specific on that one slide where I showed the seven industries. Those were the seven industries that were representative in the first cycle. Um, so there is no restriction for industry. Um, in terms of reInvent yeah. Hampton Roads. Um, well, first of all, I'm a member of the Board of Hampton Roads Community Foundation, and reInvent Hampton Roads has come out of the um, Hampton Roads Community Foundation. I've done a more the foundation as well. As the first part, first stage in that, we set up four study groups. One to look at workforce development, one to look at clusters, one to look at leadership, and one to look at entrepreneurs and um, how to build a stronger, more supportive environment for entrepreneurs. This is one of three double <coughs> initiatives that came out of that study group that operated during 2014. Um, there are two other um, initiatives. Um, this is probably the furthest along, but we also have something that is being branded and will be launched in June called Start Wheel, which will be a central online resource for entrepreneurs to go to if they want to find out where to take courses, mentors, coordinated calendar region-wide of all the events, the Wednesday meeting here, all that's going to be on, um, so a centralized resource. And then the third area um, is kind of coordinating a lot and building more of the incubators and um, accelerators around the community. So um, it's all part of reInvent Hampton Roads. We're kind of one section of it over here. Well, real quick before we get to this next question, so we're about seven minutes to 10 o'clock. If you do have a hard stop and need to be feed out of here, then please just feel free to exit uh, quietly. Uh, a couple things about the after uh, after events. Um, we like to steer people toward town center. Uh, there's a great Starbucks down the road here. There's a daily grind at town center. A lot of people probably want to talk and ask questions after this event. Um, but if you do have to leave at 10 o'clock, we're probably going to go five, 10 minutes over so that we can get all the questions in. <clears throat> yeah, you, you keyed on something. Uh, for example, thinking about me starting an entrepreneur business here in Hampton Roads starting from scratch and you mentioned something I think that's very key so what I'm doing is a, is a, um, a plethora of research what concerns me besides the starting a business here what concerns me is starting the right business that's good for you know for Hampton Roads for example you know and so that's where my research I don't want to start a business and, and you know there's 60,000 other type of business is that the right way to start before I start looking at 757 Angel to help guide me into the right directions and the right right step. Yeah. You know, um, I have 31 years in aviation. I retired uh, Navy, mm -hmm. and so I have a lot of experience in unmanned vehicles and, um, and and aviation in general. So I'm kind of looking at that because I have a lot of background in it. So. Is that the right step to really look at what Hampton Roads needs to, to be successful in the business? Mm -hmm. I think definitely. I think you um, are on the right track. I also think that there's tremendous resources in the area in terms of incubators that can pro provide you with assistance. You may have already pursued that, but there's Hatch. Where are you located? Um, I'm located actually in Norfolk. Virginia, okay. My home is in Norfolk, Virginia. Yeah. So, yeah, we have um, representatives here from incubators that can help you along those lines in steering you in the right direction um, and actually helping you get the information you need and do the research you need to form your business plan. Because, like you said, I want to bring business in. In aviation, you can, you know, you can do that by doing so many other things by like you said, not having just a pizzeria, you're more concerned about bringing money into the right. Is that a true statement? Where yes, absolutely. We're looking to grow the economy of the region, not the economy of any particular state. So I have no bias against pizzerias. I love pizza. <laughs> that was just an example of really a, a Virginia Beach pizzeria putting out a Norfolk, a, a, a Norfolk pizzeria really doesn't help Hampton Roads at all. That's 
you know, a zero gain. And so what we're looking to do is grow the Hampton Roads economy, driving, bringing revenues in from outside. And I would say that you want to be prepared when you when you come to 757 Angels, you want to have that figured well, out. Yes, sir, and I want to have a plan that is not just for 757, most important is have a good plan. Will this work for me to make my business be successful and grow from, let's say, one to five years, five years to ten Definitely. years? Definitely. Those are the things that I'm looking at before I come to you, and I'm sorry, but I don't want to waste your time. Right. No, well, I appreciate that's that. That's why this community exists. That's why we want you to come here. We want you to go visit so Hatch. Am I here at the right place yeah. to listen to all You got it. Yeah. Can I offer something to you as well? Yes. Can we talk afterwards? As a colleague and I have started uh, Andrew Rhodes Unmanned Systems Industry Roundtable. We've got about 15 colleagues doing unmanned systems right. here so far. I'll, I'll so see you after the meeting. There's, there's a great community for you to connect to in that business, and there's probably some people who want to talk to you about that. So we have this gentleman here who has I mean, that question. This, this gentleman actually kind of made me think of, about some clarification. So he sounds like he's in the concept phase right now. Everything's on paper or up in his uh -huh. mind. Uh -huh. what, what is 75? Are they looking for something like this business right here that is like already like got some infrastructure ready to go? And, but we need capital to make the next leap. Like what are what are your investors looking for in that regard? So we are a startup ourselves, and we are learning what our investors are looking for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the first thing. <laughs> No, I mean, that's answer. it. That's the honest truth. So I don't want to make, you know, we can't make any guarantees because it's, again, each individual investor makes their own decision. But to speak for the group, we are interested in um, probably companies that are a little further along. Again, pre-revenue is not a problem for us, startup, but we want to see some sort of validation. So when you talk about validation, a lot of people talk about sales. That is not always the type of validation we're looking for. It may be, pro you know, if you're working on R&D, it may be some sort of product validation. Um, perhaps it's going to be a competitive valuation, uh, validation. It, it could come in all different steps. So really, there is no stage of business. Um, if you're in the very initial stages, I would offer that you should probably be go to an incubator, learn more about the area, and once you have a business plan in place, um, that would be a good time to start thinking about 757 yes. One here, and then Aaron, and then back of the room, I think. Is this limited to um, for profit, or can it be for not for profit and for profit? Uh-huh, good question. Um, so we have not seen any not-for-profit. Generally, I think our investors, especially at this initial time, are looking for for-profit businesses, high-growth for-profit businesses. Um, but that's not to say that they wouldn't entertain something down the road. Aaron? Hi. Um, this gentleman um, stirred up a question in my mind because I actually am um, very far deep into my business. Um, no longer concept I have working models on relationships with business shop owners and everything. Uh, so I was wondering how that would go about if you already have connections consignment, um, you know, shops you want to sell and you're just ready to push a button. How it would work with 757 yeah, Angels? Is, is that something that, that would be? Definitely. That, that's Apply. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir, do you have a question in the back? I guess mine's similar. I've been in business over 12 years and I'm trying to get out of being the type of being the owner and growing the business to do more income coming in, but I'm looking for, everybody says that's what I need to do, but of course when you've been in tech so long, now you're going to become the manager and sales and marketing person, mm -hmm. so that I can add more technicians to help more people, so on and so forth, so would it still be something to consider to be used to look for that capital, because I know I initially I didn't have the funds to fund a salesperson, or necessarily to pick up two or three more techs for the growth that I'm anticipating. Yeah, so I definitely think that that's what we're here for as a capital source. I would encourage you in your um, situation as you um, have sales challenges that in your materials you really present sales strategies and uh, recruiting strategies and vertical lines and things of that nature. Um, so when you approach the, uh, the different um, members that you could speak to that. All right, Kevin, do we have any questions from the balcony? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, 
Uh, just a quick question. Since you guys are uniquely set up as a nonprofit, and understand that structure of um, you're you're organizing this effort to present to individual investors to make their own decisions. Um, is the nonprofit itself funded by the members, yes. um, the individual members? And it, it, if so, um, once it's funded in the nonprofit, I think. Have you guys considered giving any uh, grants to other potential nonprofits in which investors aren't seeking um, equity stake in, but actually you can now start affecting the, the, the economy and the startup community here through nonprofit grants from a nonprofit that's already funded by the individual members? Great question. Yeah. Um, we actually just started talking about it, so it's very timely. Um, the first question is yes, we are a nonprofit, and yes, we are funded by membership dues. Okay. Um, the second part of your question is grants. I'm not sure exactly where we end up. But we're going to end up on that, but we have started talking about what the need is in the community and the different stages of companies. I, you know, what, where they're at, very conceptual, and then all the way through to an early stage company. And what we can do for those conceptual companies. Um, we are um, looking at different sort of curriculums and different programs, but we're really in the beginning stages of trying to develop how we're going to participate in that. But we have recognized that as a need. Great. Thank you. Okay, Kyle, and then gentlemen back there and there. Uh, how do you pair your mentors uh, after the first pre screening process? How do we what? Pair your mentors. Pair? Mm -hmm. um, Industry expertise, um, interest in the space, um, former entrepreneurs um, with success or failure in the space. We look for uh, mentors. So far, we've only gone through one cycle. So our mentors, we, we drew from our board, and they tended to match up pretty well. Um, however, um, we would look to outside the group to for um, advice and expertise as well. Yes, sir. Is there any cost to apply? <laughs> yes, great question. There's a hundred dollar application fee. We are not looking to pick the pockets of the entrepreneurs. We are definitely um, in line with the entrepreneurial spirit and the ethos of entrepreneurism. But we are a very lean organization ourselves, and we have to separate the curious from the serious, and that therefore we have to be. Yes, ma'am. Can you comment on the quality of the applications that you received? Were they ready? Were you surprised by what you got? We got 15 applications in the first cycle. I thought they were very well done. Um, I think in the first round, we had some very, very hard choices. There were a lot of great companies. Um, and um, again, sometimes and um, picking one over the other is just a sense. It's really hard. Um, you hear more stories about that in the media than anything else. Is someone passing on something, and then the next day it's the next best thing. Um, so you know, that's it depends on who's in the room and what their um, their knowledge of the space is. Again, the um, the Vetting teams that are assigned talk about the companies and their um, their due diligence on the companies is very. But the companies themselves were all very um, provided very good quality applications, and we picked the ones that we just thought were the most fully formed. Yes, ma'am. So so far you got 15 applications, and how many have you picked, and what type of company have you picked, and how far have they gotten? Uh -huh. We have 15 applications in the first cycle. We are now getting ready to embark on the second cycle. So the first cycle is beyond us. From that, we picked five, and then we picked two. Um, the industries represented were, there were seven um, primary industries, instrumentation, technology, um, medical, um, trying to think of some of the others. Um, insurance. Um, from that, I'm sorry, what was the second part of your question? How far have they gotten? So um, again, we had two present at the membership meeting. And of those two, one had a glitch. And so we had to stop the process. And we'll reintroduce them later. The other one is um, working on finalizing um, 
commitments right now. Yes, sir. Are they uh, in the application process for the first iteration of this? Were there any common themes that you wish you had seen like improvements in? Like, where, what was what was lacking from the people that applied? Great question. Um, I think that you know, I'm actually going to take that on on um, our group ourselves. I thought that the applications were very well done. Um, I think that we, since we are a startup ourselves, we talked about providing our um, entrepreneurs with a little more guidance in terms of things that they should hit on. So core competencies, things like sales, the things that we want to hear about in sales management, and we are still working on those. We're looking at about five to six, and we'll be providing those to people as we go through. Okay, well, great. I think those are some great questions. I'm sure you guys have a lot more. Let's thank my Couple of housekeeping. And um, folks, thank you very much for such a great turnout. We're very enthusiastic about the future for One Million Cups. Are there any questions about One Million Cups? Or what, from 757. I forgot again. Yeah, 757. What do you do? What do you do? For you? Got it. Sorry. Thank you, Steve. What can this community do for 757 Angels? What, what, oh, I'm sorry. I yeah, we were supposed to ask you that. What can, you what can this community do for 757 Angels? Apply. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, yeah, so uh, in the last couple of minutes, are there any questions that you have for us for the One Million Cups program? How do we go about getting on the list for presentations? Great question. You go to one millioncups.com forward slash Virginia Beach and there's a button that says uh, apply to present. Great. And what happens is we get those applications, we review them as a team, we have comments, and we might reach out to you for some questions and then uh, approve or reject and move you into scheduling. So there's a real great hand holding process that Cal Cal There's Calvin some flyers up here too that kind of explains the process. So yeah. please grab one on the way out right. if you're interested in presenting. How long did it take the, the waiting because I applied like two weeks ago but I haven't heard from you? You may apply, so we were having some startup glitches. You probably applied on our old site, and so we have that data and we got to move it over. Um, what's the name of your company? Brain Balance. Brain Balance, Virginia Beach. I don't yeah. recall. Reapply. Yeah, yeah, please. yeah, please put that back in because I don't recall seeing that. And there, there was a, there was a, um, at least like email, one million cups Virginia Beach at g, is it at gmail.com? Is that right? Yeah, to figure out what happened. Okay. Yeah. Oh. They switched yeah, over switched from an old site and website to a new website, and we have all the data, and I'll go double check, but yeah. something where's, might have Where is the there. website? I mean, because I Google it, Virginia Beach. One million cups .com with the number one forward slash Virginia Beach. Other questions for us? Who's going to tell a colleague or a friend about this forum? Yeah. All right, ninja your hashtag. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We're going to be here every Wednesday. Next week we have two great companies lined up, Nataris and Quiver. Uh, Nataris, I have said, is industrial sensors. It's situational awareness, Internet of Things, and big data. And Quiver is basically trying to say, like, they want to be a digital replacement to cash. I'm really excited about both of those companies. And uh, so with that, we, 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 we've all also talked to the dean, and he's got larger space for us. So. <laughs> 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 You didn't see Ray's uh, face up on there because he needs to go fill out his profile. This is Ray White, also from City of Virginia Beach, and he's been really instrumental. And we got up at 7:30 in the morning and drove up to Richmond to check out One Million Cups. He's the kind of been the man behind the scenes. We need to get his name up on that on that sheet. Yeah. Economic development, okay? Now you know where he is. Economic development. Somebody <laughs> want to know? All right, great. Well, thanks very much for coming. There's coffee left in here. Coffee left. Make your way out.